Hello and welcome to What Now with Anna and Eric. I am Anna. I'm Eric. Still here. Still yes. here. <laughs> and we're so excited uh, to be doing this with you. We are reading through the Bible chronologically in a year. It has been rich. It has been educational. And it has deepened mine and Eric's friendship to just, I think, yeah. like, at least close to best friends now, if For, not. I mean, we were pretty close to begin with. But yeah, I think BFF status, like, I don't want to spoil my Christmas gift to you, but it might be one of those necklaces with half the heart that goes to you that says, like, <laughs> best fur, and then mine says, Tss, and, and then, yeah, and then we'll wear them around so everybody knows. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. I'm yeah. excited. I have so, high expectations. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I'm hoping they do like Santa store at the kids school because then I, I'm for sure it'll be there. Yeah. So, but I mean, what what a year to do the Bible in a year for 2020. I mean, come on. If you, if you ever needed the Bible in a year, this is the year that you... this was the perfect year to do it. Yeah. It's also the perfect year to read about revelations, which we're going to get to. <laughs> end of December. Anna, I'm telling you, if we start reading, if we start reading Revelations and it matches up way too perfectly, I'm going to be a little nervous for New Year's. I'm just saying. We're going to start a movement. It's happening now. Yes. The end of the world. Stand out with the signs. Jesus is coming. Yeah. Four I've horsemen just ride by. No good. <laughs> So this week, we were pretty solidly, we hit Acts, we hit uh, Galatians, we hit Thessalonians, we even hit like the very first dabbled, dabbled in dabbled in First Corinthians. <laughs> yes. So that was great. Um, and we also hit a new genre that we haven't really seen before. So uh, Acts was very much like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's eyewitness accounts, historical genre that's kind of laying out what is happening at the time with the apostles and the way is what christianity was called at the time and then we hit uh these letters we hit the letter to galatia letter to thessalonica the letter to corinth and uh these are written by paul and this i mean this genre is uh typically called either letters which is pretty on the nose or <laughs> the religious um, title of the epistles and what's interesting about the genre of letters is really the literary context of it so the thing about letters I mean you think about if you send a letter to somebody you're writing a letter it's from a specific person to a specific person or group of people about a specific topic so it's not just like a general laying out of what things are going context is extremely important with letters and and we've seen that certainly before really in all of the other sections of the bible how important context is both literary and historical but it is especially important with these letters that paul is sending sometimes he tells us tells us why he sends a letter sometimes he does not so a spoiler yeah. for the book of james which we have not gotten to yet <laughs> always going to books we haven't read yet That's so great. James writes a letter to a bunch of people who are being persecuted, and then he says the statement, consider it pure joy that this is happening to you. Well, if you don't know he's sending a letter to people who are being persecuted, that message falls on completely different ears. The context is extremely important. Well, and that's, and I think culture and who it's being written to is important. And, and to really understand that you might not be Number one, you might not be going through that season in your life that the people that are getting this letter written to them are going through. So you may be like, well, I, this doesn't really, really affect me or doesn't really, I'm not feeling this one, but it's okay because there's other letters that are written to different circumstances in different cultures, but also understanding that your thing that you're going through might not be on the same level as you might be feeling suffering, you might be feeling persecution, you might be feeling that, but you might not actually be locked up and being tortured and being, that you yeah. don't have to be at that level to really experience the message of it. Um, you might just be going through that season. And if you understand 
what that people group is going through and what Paul is trying to convey to them, then when you do get to that season of your life or you do go through that, you're reminded of, oh, wait a second. Paul spoke directly to that and really showed me a way to connect it to Jesus and really rooted in that. So I think it's good to go through that and really just make notes of, man, if I'm going through this, this is where I should go. Yeah. And it, this really does go back to our, our favorite um, biblical terminologies that we use maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter, <laughs> Yeah. but exegesis and hermeneutics. So exegesis, exegesis when Jesus leaves. No, that's not. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't leave. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. He went to heaven, but he left yeah. us the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus. So <laughs> yeah. Three and one, you know, he still stays. He doesn't really leave. So yeah, not so bad. <laughs> exegesis is the study of a text to discover the original intended meaning, which again is very important with letters. What was the intended meaning of these letters that Paul is sending out? And then hermeneutics is now, how do I take that original intended meaning and how do I interpret it to how, how it's relevant today? So just kind of keep that in mind as you are reading through the letters, because that can really change uh, how you interpret things. What is the historical context? What is the literary context? And really, the cool thing about reading through the Bible in the year is you get a bigger picture, which really helps you to take these instances of thought and put them into the bigger message of God throughout the Bible. So, True. so let's... So Let's get into it. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Uh, let's start out with a fun one. You know I'm what? Sure. I always like starting with fun because then we can just go down and end with sadness and despair. <laughs> take, it by, yeah, let's, take it by the end really of it. Start on a high note and then just crash. <laughs> well, okay. The week we did the death of Jesus, we did technically do the opposite. Like we started out really low, but we brought it back up at the end with some humor, <laughs> which is hard to do, yeah. but we got there. There you go. <laughs> All right, bring it, bring it. Okay, the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 18. Here's what's happening. There's a little girl who is possessed by a demon. Some people are using that to their advantage to have her tell fortunes and make money off of her. Pretty not great people. Mm -hmm. So this little girl is following Paul around, and she's basically saying like, oh, this is, this is Paul, um, he follows Jesus. He knows Jesus. He's doing this the power of Jesus. She keeps following him around. And verse 18, it says, this went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And instantly it left her. This was, I'm pretty sure, the first instance of healing of annoyance. <laughs> he was, he didn't do it out of compassion. Didn't do it because he liked her. Didn't do it because she asked. He was literally like, this is super annoying. Boom. You yeah. need to out. <laughs> and, and listen, once again, we're in different stages of our life, Anna. We read that so differently because for me, that is the perfect parenting advice, especially <laughs> during shutdown, during quarantine time. I mean, if your kid is just bouncing off the walls, following you everywhere, this is an awesome time to just turn and cast out the demon. And, <laughs> <a> demon. <laughs> and if it works, we like, we would love to have you on and just speak on how, you know what <laughs> I was just, I was using this, but, but really understanding that in parenting, if you look at what she's shouting, it says, you know, that she's following around and she's shouting, these men's are servant of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. Like she's shouting positive things. A lot of times in parenting, they're not like shouting your praises. And if your kid is, then more power to you. But most of the time, it's not shouting praises of how great you are. So, <laughs> you know what? Quarantine could be, I mean, we could see a level of casting out demons that we have never seen before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, can, and free come all on. the children, free the children. If you are, if you are a parent right now, and you don't cling on to this verse and try cast out, or I'm sure the way 2020 is gone, you've tried to cast out the demons. Far on your tried. <laughs> I 
guarantee most parents have tried already to do that. But yes, that's or like when Jesus turns on Peter, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Those have been spoken in this house multiple times <laughs> in this year already. So, so parenting advice. This is solid yeah. gold, people. This is gold. Listen, Paul did it. Might as yep. well do it. Might as well give it a shot. <laughs> um, so I settled pretty heavily in Galatians this week. There you go. We hit on a pretty big topic. I, I think there are two big themes that, that I really look at. The first one was of the law versus faith. Man, this comes, this is full circle. Like we have, we spent eight months in the Old Testament. Uh, we know the law. <laughs> we have read about the law. It played a pretty central role in most of our year. And yeah. here Paul is, and he says something devastatingly radical to the Jewish people. The Jews have been living with the law since Moses. Yeah. Yeah. Since Moses, yeah. it has been many, 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 many generations yeah. of people. And this is like, you know, we say, yeah, it's like a way of life. It's, it is legitimately their lives. Mm -hmm. They parent with the law. They live with the law. They work with the law. They die with the law. They are born into the law. Like the law is legitimately, I mean, synonymous with the Jewish people at this point. And Jesus already has been rocking the boat on this thing, you know, healing on the Sabbath. He was, he's a rebel. <laughs> and here Paul is, and he, t he goes this whole other step and he says this and he starts out kind of talking about the law, defining it for people. And we see it in Galatians 3, 24, where he says, let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And what's cool is we have seen, and we talked about different ways that the law protected people, like one of the more bizarre rules back in <laughs> Moses's day was you couldn't kill your goat on the way to the temple which seemed very weird out of context. Again, context is important until you learned that the Israelites were tempted to worship the goat God. And so then this law protected them. Well, then Paul continues. He, he really breaks us down. He talks about Galatians 3.10. Those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse for the scriptures say, cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commandments that are written in God's book of the law. The law was very important. If you did not follow it, you were dead most of the time. We we had we spent a whole week on most of the verses that we read. Somebody died. And, and you're dead. And yeah. you're dead. And, and you're dead. dead. And you're dead. <laughs> At one point, a whole bunch of people, like large groups of people, were dead. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law, for the scripture says it is through faith that a righteous person has life. This is a very radical idea, and it really also breaks down the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Well, and that's, I think, understanding it's not an either or. Like, like if you look at it and you put it in perspective of culturally what has been going on, like, there are 300 plus laws, and even, even priests and, and high religious elite people understood that, man, you know what, it, that is really tough. And we kind of got to put up protection over that and figure out how to do that. But they would start ranking what was going on and what laws were kind of in what they were doing. So perfect example is if I was ranking my laws and, and keeping it, I would put, man, I can't work on the Sabbath, like that's, I need to rest on the Sabbath. I can't be doing any work, all right? But there's also that law that says, if your donkey falls in a well, pull him out. Well, if my donkey falls in a well on a Sunday, on the Sabbath, uh, well, <laughs> that donkey dead, because I, because not dead. working up, but, so if it rains that way, and Jesus tells us, he, he states, Really, when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest part of the law? And he states that new covenant of love God with everything that you've got. 
and love others. And that last part of that is all the prophets in the law fall under this. So he's stating kind of his, his ranking. And he's saying that, man, if you love God, if you love others, and you happen to work on the Sabbath or do something on the Sabbath, it's okay because you're doing those two things that really encompass everything that falls underneath it. So it, it's not a, well, these laws aren't important. And it's not just, you can just have faith and be saved. It's both in that. And I think we see that. And even in 5 1 of Galatians, we see it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. That is the slavery of your sins, your, your problems, that's a, that burden. But I think to some extent, we need to be freed from our, our interpretation of what church is or what religion is or what faith is and understand that it's not just all about the rules that need to be followed it's not all about what you need to look like and act like there's more to it and if we have that we can be slaves to those laws as well sometimes where and we I, need to have that freedom i think paul really clarifies this not all of it in these letters that we look like look we're looking at now, but also in future letters. Spoiler again. <laughs> but I think something number one, he clarifies a little more in verse 13. He says, For you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. And uh, later on, he talks about because we as people, we love. We love rules in the sense that if we check all of our boxes, we get to go into heaven and it, we feel secure in that, you know, like we yeah. like being able to say like, yeah, we, we did the right things and we're getting in. But what Paul is saying, cause he talks about fruit a little bit later where he's like, listen, if you don't have fruit, you don't know Jesus. Well, people sometimes interpret that to mean, oh, fruit is what gets me into heaven. But the yeah. opposite is actually true. It's that when you love Jesus, when you live a righteous life, your fruit, your good deeds, loving one another should naturally come out of that. And if they do not naturally come out of that, you need to check yourself. <laughs> check, when do you, when should you check yourself? I don't want to say it. Go on. When should Who's that even you, by? I don't remember. You don't remember when you should check yourself? Okay. We all know. All right, moving on. <laughs> Probably just before you wreck yourself is yeah. when you definitely check yourself. But you need to check yourself <laughs> <laughs> and say, okay, am I really following Jesus? And, and Paul says later too, he says, listen, just because you're free now and everything is permissible doesn't mean that you should do everything. Yeah. Like, He's, he's pretty clear on that. So this also goes, this just goes right back to these are letters. We need to keep in mind what is the bigger picture? What is the main things that, that we know about God and we know about Jesus when we start looking at these instances of the law versus faith or fruit versus our sinful nature? Like, how does that really break down in the overall context? And yeah. that, and that really is, uh, a huge factor of reading through the Bible because then you can really see those things in yeah. life with each other. For sure. For uh, sure. That was Galatians. There you go. Galatians in a nutshell. In Boom. a nutshell. <laughs> Listen, faith and freedom. That's the that's you gotta find that. Yeah, and, and if you're still confused, there are so many lessons and talks and writings about this. I encourage you to look at it for yourself. Oh, I did want to say this. I did not say this before. There is a verse about Paul is speaking in a synagogue and it says the people were taking notes and checking later what he said to see if what he was saying was true. And I was like, that's what we tell people to do. <laughs> Just write it down. Check it for yourself. Don't yeah, take it anybody's yourself. word for it. Go look into it. That's right. Sure. Listen, as crazy as it seems, I mess up. <laughs> I was going to say we, but yeah. Yeah. Eric yeah, messes up. You too. probably do. Yeah, once in a while, less than you do. Yeah. So, but um, I think 
Yeah, and I, I think for, for me, Galatians, um, you look at, we get the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians. Ooh, yes. So then 5, I think it's 522. Yes, it is. Uh, Galatians 522, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forebodance, which I don't like that version because I like it better when it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Forebodance always trips me up. Isn't it forbearance? Forbearance, not forbodance. Why that I reading? I think you combined it with foreboding. Maybe. <laughs> for be- for- I knew what you were talking about. So anywho, the translation of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, I think is a really good thing to have and be able to, once again, I'm a list guy, to be able to say, man, if this is the fruit of the spirit, if this is really where I need to ground myself in this, it's very easy to make a list of these things and say, okay, where am I at with loving others? Where am I at with joy in my life? And just be able to look back at that. So I think that's a really helpful part of the way. You're checking yourself. (laughs) Right before. But this one, you can check yourself after you wreck yourself and be like, wow, that's, that's why I wrecked myself. (laughs) That's the new theme. Check yourself after you wreck yourself. Jesus gives us that opportunity, salvation. You know, he meets us where we are. So we might have wrecked ourselves. Yeah. So that to a whole different level. It's deep. (laughs) Yeah. Ice Cube says, check yourself before you wreck yourself. But Jesus says, even when you do wreck yourself, come to me and I will set you free. True. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, my next step. Yes. Um, This was such a great week where we see uh, again and again and again tips for sharing your faith. And it went as specific as there were instances where Paul was around religious people. So he would he said things like, hey, I see this thing about an unknown God. I know that dude, let's talk about him. Or, hey, your poets say this, that's how this relates to scripture. Or there's other instances where, um, he healed this guy who couldn't walk. And then after he healed them, he's like, Hey, let me introduce you to Jesus. Where sometimes we need to meet people at their needs so that we can open up opportunities to talk to them about their spiritual needs. Yes. And then, uh, there were two different sections, which I thought were very cool too. Um, one of them was talking about the difference between Paul was saying, In one of his letters, he's saying, listen, you guys are still pretty new to this. You are still infants in the faith. So I'm giving you milk. I'm giving you some soft messaging here. Mm -hmm. And if you were more mature in your faith, you would start getting solid food. And maybe there are people in your life right now who (laughs) you're trying to shove solid food down their throats and they don't even have the basics of the gospel yet. Or on the other hand, maybe there are people in your life that you are trying to help with their spiritual journey and they need to start going deep in the Bible. Like maybe you need to challenge them to read the Bible chronologically in a year because it is a huge step in your faith. So, so those were all really cool. Yeah. And I just think a lot of it goes to just understanding your surroundings. Know, know the people you're talking to and, and understand that your role in it is never too small, too big, you might just be setting the table for other things to happen in that person's life. And you might be pouring into this person more than anybody has ever poured into them. And they're just, you feel like, man, I'm not getting anywhere. And then they come back to you years later or months later and like, wow, I heard about this God thing. And it's so awesome. And it changed my life. And you can be like, very easily be like, you know what? That's so ridiculous because I was the one that you want the credit. Tried so hard. <laughs> yeah, but let God take the credit and just understand that He will move in the situation no matter no matter where you're at. Just make sure you're continually planting those seeds, watering those seeds, whatever needs to be done, you're mm-hmm. doing it, understanding that God has it. Yeah. Which yeah. actually I think ties in really well with First Corinthians three, six through nine. So Paul's talking to the 
Church of Corinth, he says, I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants, the one who watered work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. So right. maybe you're at a point where you are just planting seeds right now. They're right. not ready to hear about Jesus. They don't even like Jesus. Or maybe you're on the other side where somebody already planted the seed, and the person you're trying to um, break down the walls of already has no walls, and they're just waiting for an invitation to accept Jesus into their life. Yeah. So it goes back to what you said of understanding where people are at and the biggest part of that is the holy spirit can reveal that to you maybe you are yeah. horrible at reading the room yeah <laughs> but god is not yeah so just be aware of that and i think that's a really good one and just really dive into these different these different promptings of how can i share my faith better how can what tools can i have because they yeah. pop up all over the place they yeah. do Actually, it's really cool because I was just reading this book about uh, this guy who is Jewish and he was walking down the street and this person, this Bible person, he sees a bunch of Bible signs. He goes to argue with them <laughs> and the guy says to him, he says, hey, do you know about the Messiah? And the Jewish dude is like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, you know, if you look in, at the prophecies about the Messiah in the Jewish Bible, it clearly points to Jesus. Well, this Jewish guy was like, I learned nothing about that. <laughs> they don't talk about that in my schooling. And so he started looking into it, started looking in the prophecies, and he was blown away by how clearly they matched up with Jesus Christ. And we read those in the Old Testament. Like, yeah. they are legitimately in there. And what's cool is that in one of these sections, Paul is in a synagogue and he's talking to a bunch of jewish people and he starts talking to them about the prophecies about the messiah legitimately paul uses the same technique to yeah. talk to jewish people as this guy's story was which yeah. was pretty recent like this is still applicable this is still applicable. Yeah. so it's pretty cool always good to know your audience know your audience but all right eric what's your next step so my, mine's very, mine's simple list, simple list. I'm a list person. And I think if you really take the fruit of the spirit and you list out those things in somewhere that if you have a journal, if you have a place where you take notes, if, even if it's a sticky note, and anytime you come across verses that deal with those things, deal with patience, deal with kindness, deal with love, deal with all of those things, um, just making notes next to it. So if you take time, if it's daily, if it's weekly, whatever it is to say, man, how am I doing in these areas? This fruit of the spirit, how am I really doing? Am I struggling with loving others? Am I struggling with patience? Am I struggling finding joy? Then you can really dive back into scripture and say, okay, how do I find that? What does the Bible say about me really working on those things? And it's just an awesome checklist to have in front of you to make sure you're on the right track to trying to live in that fruit of the spirit and live your life out the way Jesus promises. So I, I just think that's really good just to keep it in front of you and to keep it at the front of your mind to say, when I'm struggling with those areas, this is where I can go with scripture. That's right. So. After you wreck yourself, check those lists. Or, or right before, or right before. Or during. Yeah. <laughs> argument whip out your fruit of the spirit <laughs> be like all right we need to change this we there you go <laughs> oh good or time during your casting out of the demons in your children check yep. your fruit of the spirit list yeah am i am i patient am, am I, I doing this joyfully am i doing this kindly yep true you can look at um, all. <laughs> so thank you for listening to uh what now with anna and eric we love doing this. I would encourage you, hey, start now. Start your chronological journey now. It is so good. It is rich. And I mean, we love doing it so much. On some days, we do it twice just because we love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and don't be, don't be afraid to dive into this with us. I mean, come on. Yeah. Let, let's, let's get you caught up. We, God created everything. We screwed it up. Yeah. He sent people. He spoke to people and told them, tell everybody to change their ways. We still didn't. Then he decided to send Jesus. Jesus lived, taught, did some great things, 
died for us, then defeated death to prove that death doesn't have a hold on us, yeah. defeated death. And then he left again, but he left us the Holy Spirit so we could go out and do it. And now we get to see people doing the work that Jesus called them to do. So there you go. There you go. 10 Boom. months of content. <laughs> right there. Now you can dive in to First and Second Corinthians with us. Yeah, <laughs> which we're very excited about. <laughs> get ready for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for listening to What Out and Eric. I am Anna Mae Martin. I am Eric Anderson, because it's official. So, yes. it's official. <laughs> Have an awesome day. Bye.